It's the 1860s and Kiwis are facing a challenge. They want to communicate faster. But send a letter by snail mail and you could be waiting months for a reply. So in 1862, the first telegraph line is built between Littleton and Christchurch. Kiwis can now stay in touch with each other electronically using a system of Morse code, a series of dots and dashes to represent the alphabet. One of the first messages is sent to a Mr. Oates in Christchurch. Unfortunately, it isn't good news. Telegraph lines soon spread up the South Island. But connecting up the North Island isn't plain sailing. First, the cable snaps. Then it runs out. Finally, the connection is made. Ten years later, we hook up to Australia. And then in 1902, the world. But Morse code becomes history when Alexander Graham Bell launches the telephone with the words... <laughs> Dunedin electrician and all-round smarty pants Charles A. Henry decides to make his own telephone from instructions out of a magazine. The local newspaper describes the historic phone call as simply marvellous. And soon the first telephone exchange is open, putting Kiwis directly in touch with each other across the country. By 1918, World War I is coming to an end. But not before soldiers discover the power of sending urgent voice messages around the battlefields via radio waves. When the fighting's done, the government steps in to regulate what's broadcast. Initially, it's a very serious business. But secret transmissions of music from a house in Wellington in 1921 confirm the power of radio to entertain. By 1930, the first rugby test between the All Blacks and British Lions is broadcast live on public radio from Carisbrook in Dunedin. The All Blacks lose 6-3, but the broadcast age has arrived. 30 years later, radio gets a serious rival, moving pictures. On the 1st of June 1960, television beams into a handful of households around New Zealand for the first time. And with the launch of the first satellite network into Sat-1, it's one giant leap for mankind that helps Kiwis connect with events happening in real time around the world. That's one small step for man. That same decade, the first electronic computer arrives in New Zealand, the IBM 650. Pretty soon, academics realise their computers can be linked to do simple information sharing and the internet is born. But in 1991, something incredible happens. English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee brings together a system that allows connected users to share all sorts of information via their computers. The World Wide Web is born, creating a single global information space. And with the smarts of smartphone technology in 2005, we can now interact online from the office, our bedroom and even up a mountain. In less than 200 years, electronic communication in New Zealand has gone from simple coded messages to global connectivity, making distance and isolation down under a thing of the past.